Hello and welcome to our program, The New Normal, where we're trying to make sense of the world during these extraordinary times. This week, a trillion dollar industry ground to a halt, tourism. Back in the old normal, a pillar of the global economy, but in 2020, not so much. And expect to see the well-trodden streets around major landmarks very quiet indeed this summer. Little good news so far then for the owners of these touristy cafes around Paris's Sacré-Cœur. But across the EU, countries are still hoping to salvage a little of the summer high season. Take Greece, for example. It has one of the lowest COVID-19 death tolls on the continent and is hoping that will encourage some foreign tourists to return. Nathalie Savarikas reports. Preparations are underway at the seaside resort in the north of Athens. Akis, the owner, wants to make sure his hotel will be ready ahead of the summer season. And this time, the rules are very strict. Tourism is the second pillar of the Greek economy right after shipping and touches on nearly every sector. But this year's forecasts are dire. Despite the heat wave and the summer mood, Greeks are wary of the future. If Greece is to lure holidaymakers, it'll have to reassure them. For the port of Piraeus, a starting point to the country's many islands, this is proving to be a challenge. The crew of a famous cruise liner is keen to show these travel agents how they'll be applying hygiene rules on board. Μείωση του 50% των αριθμών των επιβατών, καθημερινή απολύμαση των πλοίων από εξειδικευμένα στην ενεργία, γίνεται θερμομέτρηση φυσικά πριν την επιβίβαση, ενώ η χρήση μάσκας από τους επιβάτες και από το προσωπικό είναι απαραίτητη. Καλημέρα σας, καλώς ήρθατε. Περάστε από όλα τα πίστε. Ο Σαν Πράκτορας ήρθαμε εδώ για να δούμε τα μέτρα για τα καράβια, γιατί πρέπει να ξέρουμε τι θα πούμε στους πελάτες μας αύριο. Φέτος θα κάνουμε μισή σεζόν, με μισό τουρισμό. Γι' αυτό ο χειμώνας θα είναι πάρα πολύ δύσκολο. The country's exemplary lockdown managed to contain the number of COVID-19 victims. Now, Greeks are keen to capitalize on their efforts to at least save their tourist season. Well, in Greece and across the world, travel agencies will have to make do without Chinese customers this year. The millions of Chinese who normally travel abroad on holiday are likely to stay home for the rest of 2020, not least because the economy is taking a downturn and unemployment is on the rise. Now, could the economic unrest there spark a wave of popular discontent and even challenge President Xi Jinping's authority? From Beijing, Charles Pellegrin investigates. In the wake of COVID-19, China is waking up to a new reality. In this area in the south of the capital, many migrant workers used to line up in front of employment agencies looking for temporary work. The process is now entirely online, and the number of job offers has dropped. These two men are waiting and hoping to hear back inside a car that's become their home. These workers from other provinces are not counted in official statistics. Yet one brokerage firm estimated that they could more than double the current rate of unemployment. They are left without a security net. Beijing is attempting to counter rising unemployment by subsidizing companies' contributions to the unemployment insurance scheme. One Beijing consulting firm found that this policy covered the cost of 80 million existing jobs. 
This commitment to fighting unemployment underlines another fear. Well, nothing scares the Communist Party more than the idea of having tens of millions of disgruntled, unemployed individuals possibly acting as a destabilizing force on society. Whether or not these policies bear fruit remains to be seen, but for Beijing, the importance of securing the livelihoods of Chinese citizens is crystal clear. Whatever the concerns at home, though, the Chinese government is still focused on expanding its influence abroad, particularly in Africa. In this next report, we head to Zimbabwe to see how Chinese investment is helping the impoverished nation fight COVID-19. China is one of Zimbabwe's biggest trade partners. Medical aid is its latest export. Since the start of the outbreak, China has invested millions of dollars to help the Zimbabwean health system and donated close to 200,000 masks and 20,000 test kits. And now, tens of Chinese physicians have arrived, bringing with them a consignment of ventilators, testing kits and PPE. Some have described this as coronavirus diplomacy. This is a very good reflection of the rock salt friendship between China and Zimbabwe. At the Marondera General Hospital, 75 kilometers east of Harare, the Chinese team leads a workshop on how to contain COVID-19. Among them are epidemiologists, respiratory experts and practitioners of traditional medicine. Having battled the virus at home, the Chinese medics are well placed to share their expertise. They told France 24 that they were impressed by the Zimbabwean government's preventative measures. The government is, for example, building this COVID-19 isolation centre next to Marandera Hospital. China has pledged $2 billion over the next two years to help developing countries with coronavirus response. With Zimbabwe's health system undersupplied, the financing cannot come soon enough. What we basically need is are the, are the resources such as personal protective equipment and the to increase the laboratory capacity, we need more test kits. Zimbabwe's economy is set to deteriorate even further because of COVID-19. Medical aid could be a tool for Beijing to leverage greater influence in the country. Next, let's head to Lebanon, another country like Zimbabwe, where the population is facing twin threats, the coronavirus and poverty. In Lebanon, in the past few weeks, the price of basic food goods has more than doubled. That's just one example, according to activists, of how the government has been failing the Lebanese people long before COVID-19. What I'm saying, what I'm seeing is corruption everywhere. The prices are like scary. Everything is scary. We can barely buy anything. And I think the, the government needs to control that. Now, from Beirut to Buenos Aires for our last report today. In Argentina, the government initially imposed a strict lockdown in response to the outbreak of the coronavirus, and it appeared to be working. But now, in the past couple of weeks, there is increasing evidence that the virus has taken hold in one of the capital's largest slums. Matthias Musa and Matilda Guillaume have the story. In those trucks, parked outside the shantytown of Via 31, a team of doctors sent by the government are testing the local population by swabbing. Recently, the number of coronavirus cases has risen tremendously. In one week, we went from zero to 200 cases, and it's a disturbing increase. Today, we count more than 800 of them, and it's going to keep on rising over the next few weeks, along with the total increase in the city of Buenos Aires. And in fact, this neighborhood is the biggest contributor to the total increase. Today, again, the news is tragic. Ramona just died. 
Like David, Ramona Medina was running a soup kitchen, and she's the third to die in three days. They are on the front lines. The disease spreads because of overcrowding and limited access to water, but also because the people here do not have resources, and despite the mandatory lockdown, they are forced to leave their houses in order to feed their families. People here get paid daily when they work. They have some small savings, but after 40 days in lockdown with big families to feed, they have run out of money and food. Soup kitchens are the last means of getting support. The number of people coming daily to get food here has doubled. It's a clear sign of the harsh social crisis on top of the health crisis. Of course I'm afraid to get sick when I go out, but what else can I do? I have to feed my children. The pandemia is now running wild inside Via 31 and could possibly spread in the rest of the city, located just a few blocks away. That's it for this week's episode. Thank you for watching. And let's leave you now with a look at some world-famous tourist attractions, eerily quiet. See you next time. Thank you.